Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's a great pleasure for me um, to welcome so many delegates um, to this symposium. Um, delegates who have gathered here to discuss how we can better protect the world's vast cultural heritage from the dangers of conflicts and the greed of criminals. So once again, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's great having you with us today in, in Lyon. Events during the past three months have highlighted once again how this cultural heritage is being misused by individuals wishing to advance their cause. Just a few weeks ago in February saw ISIS extremists taking sledgehammers to Iraqi cultural heritage some 3,000 years old in the city of Mosul. They also burned thousands of ancient and rare books despite the failed attempts of bystanders to stop them. And this weekend saw reports ISIS continuing its campaign to loot and destroy ancient cities in Iraq, having already demolished Nimrud and Hadra. Attacks against culture and cultural diversity seem to distinguish recent conflicts where opposing factions are often defined based on their ethnic, religious or linguistic background. These forms of cultural cleansing deliberately target archaeological sites, museums, libraries, archives, and other places in the hopes of wiping out the so-called enemy's cultural identity. However, this is not their only motivation in targeting cultural heritage. Interpol noted a trend of illicit trafficking in cultural objects in the aftermath of the crisis in Iraq in 2003, Egypt and Libya in 2011, and Syria in 2012. The art market has boomed despite global economic recession, and its black market is as lucrative as those for drugs, weapons, and counterfeit goods. Ancient artifacts are therefore a potential source of great wealth for terrorist groups. A fact that was highlighted last month by the United Nations Security Council in resolution, in resolution 2199. This resolution calls for all UN member countries to take appropriate steps to prevent the trade in Iraqi and Syrian cultural property. The work of Interpol in the defense of this property is also recognized by the UN, calling us to address this illicit trade. And this is a call that Interpol is ready to answer. Indeed, this has been an area of focus since 1947, when we set up a specialized unit to support our 190 member countries detect and identify stolen works of art. Since then, we have developed specific expertise and designed tools to not only help police, but also other public and private entities to detect and identify them. An authorized action house, for example, can consult over 45,000 records in our database when they suspect the, uh, the provenience of a piece. This database is currently being modernized with the assistance of the Italian Calabinieri so that more works of art can be identified and recovered. This project will be presented later in this symposium. Cases such as the recent detection of a Roman relief freeze by a Munich-based auction house in November 2014 highlight how active and efficient information sharing can be key to recovery of an invaluable piece. Thanks to the use of our database, the German authorities were informed and Turkey, the country from where the freeze was stolen in 2010, have been able to start legal proceedings to reclaim it. I encourage you to share more information via our channels so that you too can recover pieces of your heritage and disrupt the criminal networks trafficking them. Interpol also has growing concerns over another aspect of the illicit trafficking of works of art, the market for fakes and forgeries. As art has become more valuable, the establishment of authenticity is increasingly recognized as a mandatory prerequisite for insurers, collectors, and the art community. The counterfeiting of goods in general, not only cultural ones, is one of organized crime's most profitable activities. The subject of forgery is on the symposium's agenda, 
and I'm convinced it will lead to fruitful discussions that will enable the development of mitigation strategies. Unfortunately, counterfeiting and illicit trafficking of cultural goods are still often viewed as a self-contained crime area rather than part of a more complex criminal phenomenon such as organized crime or terrorism. Information exchange enabling the exchange, the establishment of concrete links between the illicit trafficking of cultural goods and other types of crimes is therefore still insufficient. What can be done to increase collaboration and information sharing between the specialized units investigating these different criminal activities? How can currently insufficient legal instruments, both at a national and international level, be improved to more systematically prevent the trafficking of antiques? How can civil society be involved to help address problems such as the illegal excavation of archaeological areas? These and many other issues will be discussed, measures to prevent and to combat illicit trafficking explained, and various practical case studies presented in this forum. Ladies and gentlemen, in closing, Interpol will continue to support you in turning these discussions into practical realities and we are not alone in these efforts. We work closely with our international partners such as ICROM, ICOM, UNIDWAT, UNESCO, UNODC and the World Customs Organization as well as other governmental and non-governmental organizations. My thanks go to them for their continued and dedicated support. Indeed, many of them are represented here today in Lyon. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank those who have made this event here in Lyon possible. The Swiss Federal Office of Culture for its sponsorship, Switzerland, the USA and UNESCO for providing us with three exceptional chairpersons. Mr. Jean-Robert Gisler, Manager of the Works of Art Department of the Inter Interpol National Central Bureau in Bern. Mrs. Bonnie Magnus Gardiner, Art Theft Program Manager at the FBI and Mr. Edouard Planche, Program Specialist in charge of the 1970 Convention. I would like to thank the staff of this General Secretariat for their dedicated efforts to organize this event. And finally, I would like to thank you for taking your time of your busy schedules to be here with us today. I sincerely hope that your time spent at Interpol will be valuable. I wish you all a productive symposium and a pleasant stay here in Lyon. Thank you very much, and I wish you a very fruitful day. Thank you.